Welcome to the Hour of Empowerment. Today we are in Season 4, which is uh, Leadership Development, and we are in Episode 4 interview. We have a wonderful guest. Her name is Carla Blue. She is the founder and CEO of Eye Care Solutions, LLC, a company that is solutions-based, results-focused, and people-driven. Mrs. Blue also serves as an instructor for the University of Maryland, Maryland Fire Rescue Institute, and the Prince George's Community College Team Builders Academy. In 2009, Mrs. Blue retired as Lieutenant Coroner from the Prince George's County Fire and Emergency Medical Services Department after 20 years of dedicated service. Upon retirement, some of her accomplishments include, but not limited, becoming the first African-American woman to be promoted to each rank from lieutenant to lieutenant colonel and serving in the following capacities. Fire station manager, fire prevention specialist, commander of special hazards and code enforcement, and so on. Mrs. Blue attended John Hopkins University and earned her Bachelor's of Science in Business in 2002 and her Master of Science in Management in 2003. She received the NAACP Women of Achievement Award and was Firefighter of the Year at the district, county, and state levels. Thank you very much, uh, Carla, for coming. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, I know that uh, this is your first time to come to our studio. Yes. Uh, welcome to our studio. And would you please tell us a little bit about yourself, if I haven't mentioned anything else? OK, well, I think you did it. Uh, I am retired uh, almost five years now from uh, the fire service. I did 20 years there, and I absolutely enjoyed it. My passion is truly helping people reach their goals uh, in leadership and development. So I do a lot of professional and career development and, and career coaching. So that's my passion. Um, and just helping the community and doing things that I enjoy, especially with family. I've got a new grandchild, so I'm pretty excited about wow. that. Wow, yeah. uh, that's something to celebrate. Yes, yes. Yeah. I'm your fan, you know that I am proud of your achievements and I really admire what you have been doing. I know that you are the best person for this topic oh. on leadership. I have watched you facilitating discussions and speak uh, on our conferences. That's why I invited you. Would you please tell us your first leadership assignment? Wow, my first leadership assignment. You know, Asigit, I when I look at leadership, I think about leadership starting very, very early when we don't even realize that we're mm -hmm, leaders. Mm -hmm. So when you think about the first, you know, your little, little people in the crib with another yeah. baby and someone's leading the other because I believe we are born mm -hmm. to lead, mm -hmm. but we don't know everything we need to know just yet. So that's, you know, so leadership for me goes back, okay? But when I think about my first leadership assignment, as far as my career is concerned, I can remember getting an assignment that was not first, but significant to me. And that was when I was working with uh, the office of the county executive. Okay. And we had a very large um, population of people interested in changing the way we did business in public safety. Okay. And so I was assigned to all of the public safety agencies to work with them in a capacity of facilitating solutions mm. to some of those concerns. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Uh, once I heard you say that uh, you're born to lead, doesn't mean that you're born into leadership. Would you right. please explain that? What, what I believe about that is I believe that each one of us has a purpose. And that purpose is realized over time. So as you go back, you see little children interacting as a good example. Mm -hmm. Someone's leading and someone's following. Then that role may change depending on the day or the activity. So we all have leadership, but we have to figure out where we're supposed to lead. So a part of being a good leader is 
being a good follower. Mm -hmm. So you may be born to lead, but leadership, I think, is something you are developing over time because you have to realize what your voice is, what your passion is, what your purpose is. And when you figure that part out, the leadership, then, as defined to me very simply, is the ability to influence and lead other people. That's pretty simple because both good intentioned and people with not so good intentioned tensions can do that. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. our focus as leaders needs to be ethical leadership, great ethical leadership, mm -hmm. because great ethical leadership is going to lead us to the intended result, which is positive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I like that uh, in the past three episodes, I was talking about how each and every one of us is born to lead, designed to lead, and wired to lead. But unfortunately, there are few people stepping up and taking leadership responsibilities. That's why we need to push and let people know that they are entitled to lead, at least you know, their destiny, at least their passion. Of course, in the process, they also influence, they also lead others. Right. But that doesn't mean that there are no problems, no challenge, no barriers. That's why, as you said, even if we are born to lead, we need to equip ourselves to take leadership positions and become great leaders. But why don't we have great leaders at all levels? Well, Asigit, I believe that we do. We actually have leaders at every level of an organization, for example, or even in the community or the family. Mm -hmm, it really doesn't mm -hmm. matter what you're really talking about, mm -hmm. whether it's organizational, family, or community. Mm -hmm. You have leaders that are in there, mm -hmm. and you have great leaders mm -hmm. that are in there. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, we don't recognize great leaders unless they have the title to go along with their great leadership skills. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you have people, I believe that wherever you are, you are in a position to take a leadership role with or without the title. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if everybody understands that they have the ability to lead and the responsibility to lead, and you have a responsibility to know the difference between it's my turn to lead and it's my turn to follow. Exactly. Why I brought that question is that uh, we have so many problems, especially in the 21st century. Yeah. And that shows uh, that we lack leadership in certain areas. That's why we have so many challenge problems. We need many people to step up and take leadership to alleviate at least if we couldn't be able to totally solve our problems at least to alleviate and mitigate those problems mm -hmm. so we have scarcity of leadership what do you think are some of the challenges that are facing people from becoming great leaders great leaders okay so a couple things yeah. i believe that leadership empowerment is critical so if you have a group of people who are not empowered well, what is empowerment? Mm -hmm. Empowerment comes from people feeding into you. Yeah. The village concept. Mm -hmm. I, I inspire you. I train you. I educate you. I guide you. Mm -hmm. And when you have that kind of village concept where you're doing that with a group of people, then they become empowered. They say, okay, well, I can do this. I have the skill set. I have the courage because leadership takes courage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You may feel it in there to step out, but when you're out there, sometimes it's a lonely place to be. Mm -hmm. So most people gather in groups because coming away from the group can get a little scary. So leadership takes courage. courage. So when you empower people, I believe in empower people to execute the plan. So if you have something strategically that you're trying to achieve, whether it's the community, the family, or, or the organization, it doesn't matter. Whatever it is, you empower a group of people. Don't try to impose mm. 
the change or that development or whatever it is that you're doing. You include them because when people are included in the process, they take ownership. And if I feel like I'm a part of it, my voice is heard, I'm appreciated, I will execute that plan. I will take on that leadership role because I have a stake in it. It wasn't something that was given to me, forced upon me. I sat at the table. They asked my opinion. They empowered me. So leadership empowerment, I believe, will activate that progress that you're looking for. And if we continue to do that, we can build our own community of leaders mm -hmm. because you start at the very beginning. You're born to lead, now let's give you what you need. Let's fill your toolbox with the skill set that you need, with that courage that you need, with that self-discipline that you need, with that I, I am good enough. Mm -hmm. Because some people may believe that she's better or he's better. He speaks better, he writes better, he does this or, no. God has placed in each one of us our own abilities and skill sets that I believe if we just kind of hone those things, then we can do anything that we put our minds to. Mm -hmm. I like that you talked about courage yes. because uh, the premises I have it that uh, in every community, in every culture, as much as there are people who appreciate people to become leaders, there are also people who discourage people from taking leadership. Absolutely. And it takes courage. Absolutely. And sometimes we need to even break through barriers. Mm -hmm. And I believe that you broke so many barriers to become the first African-American woman to reach that lieutenant coronel position. Yes. Would you please tell us some of the challenges, some of the barriers that you broke, you fought, and finally you succeeded? Well, in the fire service, the fire service is traditionally a male-dominated occupation. Mm -hmm. And going even a little further than male-dominated occupation, it was, uh, it was white male-dominated mm -hmm. occupation. Mm -hmm. So you have diversity that was introduced to the fire service some years ago. And so thinking about where I was living out my career, you had African-American men that was introduced to that environment, so they had their own challenges. Still male-dominated, but without women, now you still have a diversity issue that they were dealing with, but it's still male-dominated. So when women were introduced to this career and culture that was male-dominated, white male-dominated, now you have the men, both African-American and white, who at least can agree on one thing, <laughs> right? Yeah. That we don't want the women <laughs> in yes. the department, uh -huh. right? So I was dealing with both gender and race issues as some of my barriers and challenges as I came into that occupation. Hmm. Along with other things that are just, we're wired to think certain things. You know, a firefighter is supposed to look like this. Hmm. They're supposed to be six foot tall and weigh, you know, 220 <laughs> pounds or whatever. So the, the barriers and the challenges were many, but the way that I overcame a lot of what we're talking about with that is I, I, was, I was raised to believe that can't just did not exist in my vocabulary. Wow. So I had a great village. I thank God for the village that I did have because I had people telling me that, Carla, if you believe it, you can achieve it. Don't say what you can't do. That's not where we come from. So when I walked in there, did I feel some things? Absolutely. Was I kind of intimidated when I looked on the wall and saw the pictures and none of them looked like me, either in race or gender? Yeah, that was intimidating. But something inside of me, and that something again goes back to, I was born to lead. I was born to lead, and I knew it, but I had to figure it out. 
And so once I was able to believe that I could do it, and I had that very first success, and I believe success, big or small, celebrate them all, because it was the first one that propelled me and gave me much more confidence mm -hmm. that absolutely I can do this. I knew I could, but I had to show myself. So the barriers for me was those things, but my ability to overcome them was I had to believe in myself. I had to listen to the people who were pouring wisdom into me. And they knew better than I did what I was able to do. So once I believed that and I stuck to what I was raised to believe, I was able to overcome some of that. That's an extraordinary story. And I'm glad that you are here because there are many women, you know, who have been discriminated because of their gender. And because of that, they don't venture and face the challenges you have been facing to become leaders. So your story, I believe that inspires many to take leadership, break through barriers and serve their communities and their organizations and their nations. So I see now that uh, you have resilience. What is the place of resilience in leadership? You have to be resilient in leadership because in leadership you're going to have moments that will knock you back mm -hmm. and you have to overcome quickly, adapt and overcome and get to solution and have a plan A, B, C, and D, mm -hmm. because if you're not resilient, you'll stay focused on the problem and not move towards the solution. So that's the difference between a good leader and a great leader. You have to be resilient. You have to be able to adapt very quickly and overcome. You have to create opportunities. And when you're able to do that, I believe a great leader is also able to activate the brilliance in other people mm -hmm. because we don't do anything by ourselves. If you don't have that team concept mm -hmm. and you're a team player mm -hmm. and surround yourself with people who are smarter than you, mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. you're the smartest person in the room, you need you some too. new friends, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you have to activate that brilliance in other people. And great leaders just, they never give up. They never quit. They come back. No doesn't mean never. Mm -hmm. it, may, it may mean not right now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's coming. Mm -hmm. So you have to figure out how to get around those barriers and obstacles and stay the course. So that means we're not born with resilience. That means we are the one to develop it so that we overcome challenge because uh, we think that, oh, she did it because she was born with that quality of overcoming. No, I, I, I agree, Asagat. I believe that if you, you know, if you think about a nursery in the hospital and all the babies are there, everybody was just born today, and every baby comes into the world, right? You have babies who are gonna be nurtured a certain way and every child is different so every child is born with something very special but it takes nurturing to bring out some of those special qualities because like I said about my own experience you have to depend on your village and if you don't have that in your own family you can develop it you have to create your own dream team you've got to create your own village sometimes and surround yourself around people who are going to feed into you those things that are positive that will grow. Sometimes people speak into you those things that are necessary to water what's already in there. We're blessed and we're powerful. We are empowered, but we have to be told and reminded sometimes, even inspired, because it may just be lying dormant waiting on the right person to speak it to you. Mm -hmm. But we have naysayers too. So you have those people who may discourage you mm -hmm. and try to bring you down. You stay away from them and you focus on the people who are going to be for you your, your front row. You know, think about if you Have you ever won front row tickets, right? Yep. That's a premier spot. 
everybody doesn't deserve the front row in your life. Mm -hmm. You choose the people who are in your front row because that's the team that's going to cheer you on. That's the team that'll help you get back up and brush you off so you can keep on going. And it may, you have to create that sometimes. It may be your family, it may be the one that you create, but you have to do that. So you're saying that association is very important for you to become resilient and overcome the leadership challenge that you are facing. Absolutely. So rather than depending on your strength, and always going, going out to fight alone, you can have a group of people that encourage you. And uh, these people could be people who are closer to you or people you uh, form, establish, and bring to, together to, to support you. Absolutely. What about character? I believe that being courageous, mm -hmm. being bold, is not enough to be a successful leader in your career, and you have seen it in other leaders. What is the place of character in leadership? I think character is the distinction between great ethical leadership and leadership with bad intentions. That it's character. Character asks and answers the question, who am I really? Who am I? So focused intentions equal intended results. So if my intentions are good, I am of good character, I'm committed to excellence, I'm honest and trustworthy. Uh, you know, th those kinds of attributes, I aim high. My character is good, I care about people. That's important for a great ethical leader because if you don't have good character, if you're starting with someone who has leadership ability, because remember, that's at the very basic level, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. You have the ability to guide or lead or influence other people. So if you don't have good character and that's what you're doing, you can be effective, but you're negatively impacting the society because you are effective, but you don't have good character. So your intentions are not good, therefore the results won't be good. So the leaders we are looking as uh, leaders who are not only courageous enough, but also with character. That's right. You, I believe that your, your goal in leadership has to be character development and being ethical. So in all of your dealings, be right and just. So what's interesting about that is History tells us a lot about people who think during their time of reign that they're right and they think that they're just. So that perception is very individualized to the person, but in a larger realm, right and just is, is pretty much something that's more global. So global leadership is something that you look at when it's good for the society. So when you look at it like that, if I am a leader with good character, meaning I, I'm committed to excellence in all of these wonderful things, attributes that I am hoping will be a good impact on the people I'm leading, then I'm also ethical, which means I'm gonna do what is right because it's the right thing to do. So if you have ethical leadership in an organization or your community or your family, then what you're gonna have is people who are empowered, people who are educated and trained. You're gonna have an inclusive environment. You're gonna have an environment where people are not afraid to speak and to take their rightful position of leadership to help their organization, their community, their family grow. So you believe that uh, character breaks or makes your leadership? Absolutely. Personally I think and organizationally? It, de it defines it. Okay. Character defines your life and your leadership because everything we do, every story that's gonna be told is also your legacy. It's the definition. So you're gonna either be remembered as a great ethical leader or you're gonna be remembered as 
a leader that was not so ethical. But do you think that, uh, is it possible for leaders without character and become successful and have like sustainable success for their individual and also for their organization, their individual success and for their organizations? People who lack good character may achieve leadership positions. We have seen that happen. History tells us it happens. People without good character can be placed, whether they are elected, appointed, whatever the case may be, into leadership roles. It happens every single day. Unfortunately, what happens when we have people who lack good character, the, the village falls. So their, their family falls and their community falls. If it's an organization, they're going to fall. If it's a country? If it's a country, the whole country falls. it's going to fall. You have to have good character. Good character is the definition. That's going to define your great ethical leadership journey. And character is not a, it's not a destination. This You're going to develop, it's a process, it's a journey, and it's a lifelong journey because we are always learning, developing, and enhancing who we are. On top of uh, resilience and character, are there other leadership attributes that you recommend for people to become great leaders? I do. I think that when you're talking about great leadership, your ability to listen to other people and value their opinion and their input is critical. Most people don't feel appreciated, so they don't speak. They don't feel like if I do say something, they really care. So I think that we have to care about people, genuinely care about people. So you can have all of the intellect and skill sets and networking ability and degrees. You can have all of those wonderful things. But if you don't really care about people, I don't care about any of those other things, I'm going to be able to look right through you and say, that person doesn't care. And nobody is going to follow a leader that doesn't really care about the people or the organization or the community or the family. They're not going to. So one way of showing care is listening. People's need, people's aspiration, people's concern. So communication is not only just talking, but it's also listening. What other uh, attributes? Attributes maybe like planning, strategizing, Absolutely. Visioning. So, so yeah, vision is something I believe that a, a, as a great leader, you have vision. You can see beyond today into a brighter tomorrow. So as a great leader, you have to have the ability to share your vision with other people so they can see it and get inspired and get it empowered so they can follow you. So vision, absolutely. Uh, strategy, the, the how. Okay, mm -hmm. so great vision, how are we gonna get there? So you've gotta strategically plan your work so that you can work the plan to achieve what mm -hmm. it is that you set out to achieve. Mm -hmm. um, trust, honesty, of course, those things, a commitment to excellence, mm -hmm. dethroning mediocrity. Dethrone mediocrity. It, it can't live here. Excellence is where we operate, and everybody will rise to that expectation. One of the reasons people avoid leadership is because they don't want to really fail or make a mistake because when you become a leader, you go out, you try something, you take risk, and obviously when you take action, there are always some mistakes, some failures. So let's make it personal. Are there any regrets in your uh, leadership? Any decisions that you made? Absolutely. But that you regret if you, you know, if you have another chance to do them again, you, you, you may do them in a different way. Absolutely, absolutely. I think that in leadership, you can't be afraid to fail because it's gonna happen. You're going to fail, but you fail forward. Okay, I failed, that didn't work out the way I planned it. I thought it was a great idea. I thought I executed it well, but 
end result, it didn't come out the way I planned it. So you're gonna fail. Don't be afraid of failure. We wouldn't have airplanes right now if we didn't have failures. Mm -hmm. They failed a whole lot of times, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but we now fly mm -hmm, where we wanna go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you can't be afraid. We have to try, try, and try again. Never quit. If we look at failure as something that defines us, then you're looking at it through the wrong lens. Failure is not what define you. It's your ability to move beyond the failure and keep moving forward that defines you. It's your persistence, your tenacity. We have to keep going. We're gonna fall. I, 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 I remember uh, one time that, you know, when we talk about failure or decision making, when you think about, um, when I think about my personal experiences, especially younger, I was uh, in marketing. This was before my wonderful career with the fire service. And I was very young. I was early 20s. And I was given an assignment. And this was like, you know, I guess, you know, you, you asked me about the first responsibility. So this <laughs> yeah. is a good story about that. I was given the assignment of reaching out because we did a lot of uh, seminars and things like that. So early 20s, I'm really just kind of getting into the working force and trying to establish myself. And I was given the assignment to you know, pick a venue and reach out. And so of course I'm doing that, but in my doing, remember the, the, the compassionate part oh, and, yeah. and all the of those part. wonderful yeah. things. So during, I was so focused on the mission that I did not focus as much on the people interaction mm. as I should have back then. And what did I learn? I didn't get my intended result because I didn't make the connection. We're, we're talking when leadership is about people. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. about networking with people, building relationships. Mm -hmm. So if you, I never heard them. I wasn't listening to them. I was listening to me. I had something to do, mm -hmm. and I was just trying to get to my <laughs> end yeah. result, right? So lesson learned, you have to care about people. Mm -hmm. You have to listen to people mm -hmm. because they know when you're not. Exactly. They know when you're self-serving mm -hmm. and not here to serve others. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was a very important lesson for I me. I hope people learn from that. Yes. All, all of us, we have mistakes yes. and we learn from uh, our mistakes. There is no way that we learn and grow without making mistakes. Exactly. The most important thing is to look back and say that I was wrong. Oh, that was really bad. And learn from that experience and as you said, fail forward and move on then because uh, there is no way that you don't make a mistake right. as a leader. So you have to take risks and use opportunities of that kind of failures to learn from them and uh, move forward. What kind of leadership styles do you, do, you, do you practice? My leadership style is a little bit of everything. It depends on the situation. My, the leadership style that I lean towards is inclusive. Okay. I like to bring people together and brainstorm and include them in the process. So I may have a vision to where I'm trying to go, but I need other people's input because what I see may be a little bit different from the people who are actually gonna take the journey with me. So it may mean that you have something that I never thought about that may be incorporated in the process to get there. Mm -hmm. So I'm inclusive. Um, mainly because I think there is so much value in diversity around the table and diversity in thought, diversity in age, diversity in gender, diversity in every meaning of the word. Diversity is so many things. And when you set the table with different people, different thought processes, you're going to get a better product. So you also mix other leadership styles like? Sometimes I may have to be autocratic, okay. but the autocratic style for me, uh, especially in my career, there were many moments of being autocratic at that, at that rank and in that position because you have to make a command decision when that's necessary. And when it's necessary, you do that very decisively. You don't have time 
to, to collaborate. You don't have time to, to build to consensus. consensus. Yeah. Right, you don't have time for that all the time. So there are gonna be times where you have to be very direct, very decisive and make a decision. And I can do that. And if the time permits, I prefer making sure that I involve other people because I think when you do that, you have a more sustained solution because the buy-in is necessary for you to get the outcome you're looking for. So your, your situation dictates the kind of leadership style you pursue? I think all leadership should be situational leadership because you can't apply one, one all, the time. all the time. It's not going to work. Are there any areas of uh, your leadership you would like to improve, you would like to grow? Yes. I am, um, with my leadership, one thing that I love doing is building relationships. So I, I'm always looking to enhance in the networking and the building and reaching out and connecting with other people and see how we can bring about change together. I'm always looking to do that more. So that's an area I'm always working on. Do you have uh, a mentor and mentees? I do. I couldn't live without my mentor and I love my mentees because I remember um, along my journey of trying to go from one position to the next, I had someone reach out to me and say, I will help you if you want me to. And I'm, if I want, of course I want, right? Yeah. Because I'm sitting here struggling and I'm trying to do it, but you can't do it alone. So my mentors were just priceless. So you have multiple mentors. I had multiple mentors. I had women mentors. I had men mentors, um, different positions, not even in the same occupation. So you choose your mentors and so they don't have to be in the same area. So it's very important to have mentors as leaders because for us to succeed, there are people who walk ahead of us yes. and we need to tap into yes. their uh, knowledge, their experience and so on and so forth. Absolutely. Great leaders offer wisdom and we have to tap into that, like you said. I just, I think about it, um, our, you know, from a cultural perspective, sitting at the feet of the elders and soaking in everything they have to tell us. And they're, they're, they're talking. It's, are we listening? We have to listen because they're going to tell the story. And they may tell the story 10 times. And it may be the eighth time that you heard it that you might get it. But you have to be open for wisdom. Absolutely. I think we need mentors. And I think you must also seek opportunities to help other people and have mentees. Do you mind to share with us your latest conversation either with your mentor with, or with your mentee? Okay, um, my mentor. I have, like I said, I have several, but um, one, one of my mentors in particular, I'm, I'm at this cross point where I'm, I'm about to embark on some new areas and so my conversation with my mentor who has done great things and continue to do great things but inspires me and gives me the level the level head that you need when you're making decisions and my biggest thing was when i am about to implement what it is that i want to do how best to start so you know go big or uh. kind of slow walk it and see exactly how it's gonna work here and then branch out. And so now, you know, you have so many global opportunities with technology, you're reaching so many people at any given time. But what's so interesting is when you start smaller and you branch out, you get your lessons learned so that as you're growing, by the time you get to the global piece, you've got some really good education and knowledge that you can bring to the table. So that was that was a little bit of, of what we talked about. Yeah, you had. 
Yeah. Wonderful. Uh, I, I enjoyed our conversation on behalf of ISAT and our viewers. Thank you very much for coming, Carla. Thank you, Ansigit. Really I truly appreciate enjoyed that. it. Thank you. Dear our viewers, uh, we hope that you enjoyed our conversation and you have learned lots of insights and you got some ideas to implement in your leadership. Today we just concluded our program on called to leadership. Next week we're going to have another topic. Until I see you next week, have a wonderful time. Thank you very much for watching.